Working with Philip Proger has been an exceptional experience on many levels. Typically, uh, in our curator-to-curator -curator capacity, we've worked with dead artists, um, looking through the estate collections and building monographs and exhibitions. But in one instance, Philip came to me as a trusted ally on something much closer and more personal. I'd been asked to come out of the closet as an artist um, in at the late part of my curatorial career. And I turned to Philip to say, well, how do I do this? I know that a curator can't see, uh, an artist can't see their own work. And so he said, look, here's what I'll do. I'll pretend you're dead and we'll go through these boxes and make sense out of you. So I put my head on the psychologist's curatorial couch and he laid out uh, an aspect of me that I'd never seen before uh, and uh, much to my surprise and elation, it actually made sense. Proger at Quahog.org. A Quahog is a clam that has a very hard shell and a soft and tasty inside meat. Some 20 years ago, or maybe it was 50, Philip phoned me out of the blue. I had been nominated to be collected by a large corporation for a possible purchase of 30 to 50 prints. I never met the guy, but over the course of a year or two, he shepherded the nomination, despite the fact that, among other difficulties, I don't give discounts, especially for large purchases. I was chosen due only to his talent and mediation abilities. In the end, I declined the purchase. A few years later, Francesca Consagra, who was curator of prints and drawings and photographs at the St. Louis Art Museum, and a, a good friend of mine, um, she called me and said she was trying to hire a real photo curator. I mentioned Philip's name. She said, who the hell is that? I've never heard of him. So a short time after that, he was hired. And a short time after that, I visited St. Louis, and Philip and I had dinner, and he had a beard. Where the hell did that come from? I said, I got up the guts to tell him, why, where, why do you have that? You look like a damn view camera photographer, or some scholar hidden in the basement writing about photography in his little uh, cubicle. Like digging for cohogs in the muck, he will have to learn how to use anything, his toes, or his, even his fingers, to find what lies hidden beneath. Uh, Philip started his career, I guess, at a, as a curator of photography here at the Cantor Arts Center. Uh, he was just uh, coming back into the museum world for, after working as a um, manager of a clock factory, I think, in, in uh, Hong Kong. Came here, he gave real renewed order to our large collection of Moybridge photographs, uh, but perhaps the most amazing bit of his work was finding little tiny glass slides and figuring out that they were the prototype for the um, zoopractoscope wheels that, that Moybridge had. This type of inventiveness and, and ingenuity uh, is a hallmark of, of Philip's um, uh, astuteness as a curator and uh, perhaps why he deserves this, uh, this wonderful award. Philip spent more time than any other curator ever looking at my work. Uh, and he came here uh, when he was in Gainesville every week and went through drawers and discovered work that I had forgotten about. And sometimes it was a bit tense. I mean, there were days, as I said, that uh, I thought, you know, he was worth his weight in aspirin because he was pulling out stuff and asking me questions. And, but in the end, you know, he ended up producing an exhibit that included a broad spectrum of my work a lot of documentary early work that had never been published before, and a lot of other unusual images that I had sort of overlooked. Um, you know, it was an ongoing uh, process, and it uh, took a while to get it resolved in terms of sponsorship, but the Peabody Essex, where he ended up, did a magnificent, absolutely the finest uh, exhibition I have ever had in the presentation of my work. It was intelligent and thoughtful and just beautifully done.
Philip is an omnivore, so he would he loved to go through all our material. And he did no less than 14, I would say, installations, from small installation of five works to huge, you know, 200 work exhibitions uh, in our special exhibition hall. What makes Philip unique, I always imagine Philip being like a miner with a shining light uh, on his cap going into a repository of works of art on paper and he will find the vein of gold. He is unbelievable. He could be looking at stacks and stacks of things, uh, many of which aren't very interesting, and he will find the most beautiful, most vintage, most gorgeous thing you could ever imagine. Uh, I mean, there's things about Philip I really can't say. Well, I did want to say one other thing. Just This just tells you what Philip is like, I think. He was doing an exhibition on the 1904 World's Fair, which occurred in St. Louis and was a big deal in St. Louis. And so he was able to do all this primary source research. He found out which artists were at the fair. He found out, you know, how certain plans got changed. It really did tremendous research. So he came to me and he said, you know, I'd love to write a brochure because I found out all this fantastic information. And I went to, you know, my administration and I said, look, Philip's done this incredible job. I think it warrants a brochure. Something should be handed out to the public about it that they can take home. And the administration said, I'm sorry, we don't have the money for this. We didn't budget for it. And, you know, it's, it's, he'll be able to, you know, put all this on the walls and we don't, you know, that's where the information will be. You know what Philip did? He went out and he wrote this brilliant essay, which he submitted to Apollo magazine and it was published. And so what was going to be a small little brochure in a small, you know, smallish gallery at the St. Louis Art Museum for a local public ended up having this incredible international audience. And that's Philip. Philip well, you know, he just see goes beyond the boundaries that other people can constrict themselves by.